critical is it to have an interoperable health information technology infrastructure in place to sustain many of the reforms outlined in the Affordable Care Act? I, I do think it's critical. I think that these are two hands that wash each other, that you need the payment reform to create a business case for care coordination, for example, uh, reducing readmissions, accountable care organizations, value-based modifiers, bundled payments. Uh, those are all critical. And I think people underappreciate how much the Affordable Care Act had provisions in it for new payment and delivery models, not just insurance reform. Uh, but in order for those models to succeed, those providers need to have the tools and the information uh, to be able to do the care coordination and the population health management and so forth. So we really need to do both and to provide the technology infrastructure for care coordination and population health management and patient engagement at the same time as we create the incentives for it. My concern is that even those are not enough, that we, uh, in a sense, need a third hand <laughs> or a third strand of DNA to create the, the, the new healthcare system, which is the know-how of how you use the technology to meet the new delivery and payment needs. And, and that, I think, is, is a real opportunity for us to learn and to teach others rapidly how to meet the needs of these new payment models. Well, I've had the pleasure on the show to have each one of your predecessors on, and it's great to have you today. And one thing I've noticed is that you're really not engaged in simply a technology oh, no. project. It's more of a social change yes. project. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, and how does partnership and collaboration factor into it all? It is absolutely a, a change. I mean, every Everything uh, that we do, we have to think about how change happens. And, you know, it's the, the idea behind having uh, a regional extension center program that says you, we want to shrink the change here and, have, and simplify it for someone who sometimes it seems like resistance where it's just we don't know what to do. And so we simplified the message of call or contact your regional extension center. That's what you got to do. Yeah, don't worry about trying to read 600 pages of regs, right? <laughs> Shrink that change. We want to create a sense of momentum. We want to highlight the bright spots, like the Beacon communities or the Meaningful Use Vanguard, to get change. You want to paint a destination postcard. This is what it's going to look like. This is why you want to do the change. You want to recruit the herd, right? You got to say there are other people who are doing this and share uh, and create those communities of, of practice. Uh, you want to make the right thing to do the easy thing to do. Uh, so those are all loss aversion, frankly, is another thing that, that works. So these are all the, the ways in which we think about the policy and the programs and the standards as being part of a big picture of change and managing change. And the pace of change is just accelerating. And this is a way, being able to manage information and manage projects like this is a way for uh, every healthcare provider, and frankly, patients too, to stay on top of things instead of falling victim to them. So as you close your tenure as the National Coordinator of Health IT, what does the future look like for you? What do you think it's going to be? What are some of the opportunities and challenges that are going to be faced? Well, I, you know, it's a staged process. And I think sometimes in Washington, we, for, we forget that you know, things take time and you, you need patience. But there has been a lot of progress made on step one, which is turn the data in the service of population health. So we've gotten amazing progress on the first milestones, which is getting people to engage with meaningful use, adopt the, the records. The next step is going to be this year, the challenge of stepping up to stage two of meaningful use. And that means exchange of information with each other and with the patient. That's going to be the big challenge. And I think we're well on our way, but the implementation of that in every hospital, every doctor's office, every community is going to be a huge and defining, I think, challenge for the next two to three years. And then while we're doing that, we also have to optimize the technology that's already in place. We have to change workflows, not just digitize the existing ones. We have to look for opportunities to streamline and simplify. Uh, we have to think about flipping the visit. Not everything has to happen within the seven, eight minutes you spend, the doctor spends with the patient. We have to empower patients to be. So all of those are part of the next series of challenges that the next national coordinator can struggle <laughs> with. And uh, this week is National Health IT Week. Uh, there are a series of events, uh, both uh, with uh, 
within the Department of Health and Human Services and with our partners and, and others who are really taking this week to mark uh, the important role that managing information better and bringing that data to life can have for uh, the lives of, of patients uh, everywhere. So uh, I'm glad uh, that, that this is airing uh, during this, this week where we can mark the progress made and also the challenges that remain. This has been the Business of Government Hour, featuring a conversation with Dr. Farzad Mastashari, National Coordinator for Health IT within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. My co-host from IBM has been Geo Patterson. Be sure to join us next week for another informative, insightful, and in-depth conversation on improving government effectiveness. For the Business of Government Hour, I'm Michael Keegan, and thanks for joining us. This has been the Business of Government Hour. Be sure to visit us on the web at businessofgovernment.org. There you can learn more about our programs and get a transcript of today's conversation. Until next week, it's businessofgovernment.org.